What's up, guys? Y'all know who it is. You definitely know who that is. Y'all been asking for it. Y'all wanted me to get Clint's interview. So we're going to go ahead and kick it off. So, Clint, of course I know, but let everybody know exactly what it was you worked on this year as far as Madden 17 development. Uh, I had a lot on my plate this year, unfortunately. I did the run fits and gaps feature. I did the ball carrier special moves and visual feedback. Uh, I also was the product owner for the new player equipment, believe it or not, stepped outside of gameplay. And uh, the kick meter, the new kick meter. And the kick meter, that's one I can't wait to see how you guys feel about it. One question I know I've gotten before I forget it from the community, how the DTs and the ends, how will they play differently with the new run fits? Will you see more push? I've noticed by playing the game that it does definitely seems like there's more ratings base going on in the trenches, but is there anything that we can expect to be different? Uh, which do you want to talk about first, run or pass? Oh, well, go ahead and talk about run. Okay, we'll hit run first. So from a high level, everyone has a gap now. And so what that means for us, where in the past we may have had a defensive lineman, we'd be telling them to just run at the lineman and then play off the lineman to determine which gap he wanted to play. Well, this year he has a gap before he engages the lineman, so he's going to take his initial movement towards his assigned gap and try to go between the blockers instead of into the blocker. Uh, on top of that, on top of the increased intelligence, what we did is uh, basically spread out the ratings a little bit more. So you're going to feel, feel Aaron Donald a lot more in a game than you will, you know, average B player. You know, I don't want to throw any names out there, but you know what I'm saying. You're going to feel those guys a lot more because we spread that out. And even uh, something you've been asking for, not quite to the scale that you want, but body weight matters now in our formulas. So when an offensive lineman and a defensive lineman get engaged, we have now added their body weight into the formula to determine who's going to win and lose that matchup. Guys, now y'all know that is great news. How long have we been asking for physical mass? I can't even be more happier than that, but let's go to part two. He's going to talk about how pass is effective. Yeah, so we also increased pass rush. What we did for the inside guys, the guards and the defensive tackles, is now when they get engaged with an a, uh, offensive line, they're going to be able to bull rush and push the pocket back towards the quarterback without having to actually shed the block. So you guys like to call it, you know, the patty cake animation. So that's now providing pressure on the quarterback if they win that matchup. And the reason I really like that is because I feel like defensive linemen can still win and get pressure without actually getting off the block. So they could do both now. The outside guys, we did a lot of work with our edge rush animations. We got them going deeper up the field and we got them moving at, at a better speed that matches up more with the quarterback's drop back. So you really do feel a pocket forming around you. And we've been saying that for years, but it, it just gets better every year. And the one thing that I've noticed, we've done a lot of play testing with people, and I'm seeing more than ever before this year, people stepping up into the pocket naturally. It. It's amazing. Right. Now, this could just be my eyes, but I want to clarify, because I've got a tweet about this earlier today. Will we see any different looking animations on pass rush? Say, for instance, in the trailer, it looks like uh, Von Miller's dipping and getting low. Is that more of a general thing, or are we seeing some variation in? Uh, yeah, there's definitely variation. We, we capture new animation content every single year. While you will still see a bunch of the animations you've seen before, you will see mixed in new ones that we've, we've got or made or created coverage with. Uh, definitely when you see guys get engaged in the run game, that's going to be a completely new experience because we have our defenders in free movement, basically. They've got to be able to get to whatever gap they're assigned to, and our blockers have got to be able to block them at any angle. So in the past where we would have had to match a heads-up block, D1 to D1 as we call it, we can now match a lineman's D1 to a defender's D3, D4, D5, all the way around the horn. You know what I mean? Now, you know, I do this with Rex all the time, too. Can you kind of explain to these guys, because, you know, I always say I can see behind the curtain now. I'm able to talk to you guys any given time, so I understand the process. But can you explain to people when you see certain animations, like maybe the offensive lineman doesn't follow all the way through, or can you explain to people why things are not going to be perfect? Like it seems like sometimes we judge these games like they need to be perfection every time. Well, let me first start by saying that we want perfect too. That's our expectation. But in our business, it's, it's really hard to attain that, and that's why we all have jobs every day to do. But uh, I think the, the primary reason, I've actually thought about this a lot, so I'm glad you asked it, but the reason that you guys ask those questions is because you're so immersed in it 
you see those guys on the field as actual football players, right? You're like, hey, that guy's thinking like a tackle. Why didn't he do this? Why didn't he do that? Well, and, and what we do, we have to build their intelligence and they can only do what we've built. And I've always said this, common sense is the hardest thing to build, right? Because if I'm, if I'm about to walk into this wall right here, I don't even think about it. I just stop and don't walk into the wall, right? Well, in a video game, you gotta put that into logic. You gotta have logic that says, hey, if A, B, and C happens, do A, B, and C. And if you have never thought about what goes through your head when walking into a wall, it makes it very hard to put that into code. Does that make yeah. sense? Oh, uh, but, but further than that is, is animation fidelity. So we are always adding animations every year, but there's always going to be a situation where we don't have an animation for just because we didn't consider it or, or it doesn't happen very often. And we're always filling those holes. But, you know, there's always going to be situations where we're missing something. And that's, again, why we have jobs and we keep filling them. We just keep growing. Absolutely. Now, just another question or two. I asked Rex the same question, and I told these guys, we got to stay politically correct. We can't confirm anything in terms of years and things like that, the stuff that I know that you guys don't know. But it's presumed that you guys will be able to eventually go to Frostbite, you know, listening to guys like Patrick Soderlund and all of that. So I asked Rex, and I'll ask you, when that ever happens for Madden, is there anything that you can see that you want as a feature that maybe it will give you the you know, the possibility to do on an, another engine like Frostbite? I think it's it's probably pretty easy to look at the games that are already on Frostbite, like Battlefield, and see the things they're able to do. And you could visualize what kind of things that would bring to our game. Uh, but we're not, we're not ready to comment or make any confirmations at this time, but uh, the possibilities are, are really limitless. But to be extremely clear, we are still moving along on our plan. The plan that Rex set forth when he came in as creative director we are on schedule, and we're going to keep going on that schedule, regardless of what engine we're on. Exactly. And guys, the reason why I asked that question is I wanted you to hear it from both Clint and Rex. It's stuff that we simply just can't answer right now. So even myself, I'm not going to answer it. If the dev doesn't answer it, there's really nothing I can tell you. All right, the last question is, like I asked you last year, was there anything? Well, actually, two more questions before we get to the last one. Sure. What is, out of the things that you worked on, what would you like people to focus on the most, like that maybe you're the most proud about or something that might catch their eye that they may not know? There's a lot. I'll talk about two specifically. The first is, is uh, run fits and the defensive gaps feature. Uh, we, we spent a lot of time to make that realistic. We actually brought in a defensive coach from the San Diego Chargers. And when he was talking to us, he installed his defense as if we were his players. And then we went and installed it in the game. And there's a lot of nuances there that we aren't talking about because it's so high level that only guys like you are interested in it, right? So we have, you saw this when you were down there at the community day, we have a force player, we have jet players, we have a hammer player, a splatter player, a cutback player. We have guys who are not in the run fit who may join the run fit in a crack replace situation. There is a ton of authentic details there that you just pick up as you play. And, and you start to notice things. You're like, man, that looked really good. You may not even be able to call out what exactly it was. You're like, this game feels different. These guys are smarter. They're doing things I wish they were doing before. It's tough to put your finger on, but I would say that's number one. And then number two, I specifically want, I want to call out some extras to the kick meter. So everyone's familiar with the new skill-based kick meter, the three button press mechanic. It's very common in sports games, but there's some things that are not there that uh, you should know about. These are not visible, I should say, that you should know about. So for the first time this year, the field that you're in is going to have an impact on kicking. If you're kicking in Denver, you're going to get a power boost because of the thin air. If you're kicking in a dome stadium, you're going to get a bit of a power boost. If you're kicking in rain or snow, you're going to get an accuracy penalty. And all of this is based on the environment you're playing in. And it's really just the tip of the iceberg. Moving forward, we want home field advantage to matter. We want weather conditions to matter. We, ha we aren't there yet. But I just wanted to throw it out there to tell all you guys out there that it is on our radar and it's, it's where we want to go. Wow, that, that's crazy. I didn't even know that about the kick meter. I'll get to the last question, but I wanted to clarify something real quick. I talked to you guys when I was down about, like, strip sacks and all that, and I've seen them where they happen where the ball, you know, he throws it backwards. Mm -hmm. But can you actually trigger that? Like, if I hit the strip yeah. button, does it trigger a uh, sack fumble? So you're seeing two different things. There's there's two new features going on there. One is more of a bug fix, but what you're talking about are uh, throw out of sacks and fumbles. So I don't know if, if you guys probably out there all remember, you remember in Madden 16, 
you could wait very, very long to hit that throw button when you were in a sack and he would just chuck it out there. And we didn't like how that looked and that wasn't authentic. So we did a complete pass on that. And so now we're actually using our physics system to determine is the arm moving forward or is it not? And we know the contact and which way the ball flies with the ball physics. That's what you're seeing. The strip sacks is a separate feature that you can actually trigger. You use the same mechanic you would to strip the ball on a ball carrier when you're blindsiding a quarterback. So if I'm the quarterback like this, we have angles for strip sacks from here all the way around the back to here. You can't do it from head on because our thinking is the quarterback can see that. And again, we go back to animation coverage. You would need a ton of animations for this, 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 this. So we don't have that yet. We may in the future, but right now all of our strip sacks are from the back. And that's the on the strip ball button. And I actually, I saw it when I was down at EA guys and I don't, I didn't even know how I did it. And I meant to act, you know, Clint when I was there, but it was guys were busy and such. But last and final question, is there anything that didn't make it just yet? Because I know Rex talked about the continuous development. Yeah. Was there anything that might be on your personal radar, currently not in Madden 17 that you might want to approach in the near future? Yeah, I think, uh, it's not going to surprise you with my answer. Uh, formation subs and defensive matchups. Uh, those are things we, we tried to get in, and we just ran out of time, and we know that all you guys want that stuff in the game. We want that stuff in the game, but that's kind of the nature of the beast of working on a uh, yearly title. You don't have infinite time. you got to get in what you can get in, and, and uh, continuous development is a great perk that we have. People should be really happy that we do that. Uh, so you never know what might happen down the road, but those are the, the two top ones. Well, there it is, man. Another great interview. I am Sim Football Critic. This is Clint, my, my bodyguard, as y'all can see, the disparity. <laughs> but, yeah, we're out, man. Um, anything else? No, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Be sure to check out Madden 17 when you have a chance. Uh, it really is game-changing. It really is. So there it is, guys. It's a wrap. Peace. Once again, guys, thanks for coming by. And if you want to interact with me live, Head on over to Sim Standard Radio every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, along with Smitty and Azure Fact. The call in number for the show is down in the description. Now, of course, for more content, go ahead and click the link above. And before you go, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. All right, guys, until next time, lights out. <laughs>